Hello everyone. In the first part of plotting math equations using geo nodes, we saw how we can plot equations expressed in Cartesian form. In this part, we will see how we can do that with parametric and polar form of equations. In parametric form, both x and y are expressed in terms of a third variable or parameter t. Parametric equations of circle are for example x equal to r cos t and y equal to r sin t, r being the radius of the circle. Another interesting example of parametric equations is that of an epicycloid. Here are the x and y equations of the epicycloid. And here is how the curve actually looks. I have included link of the website with such equations in the video description, just in case you wish to try out other examples. For now, let's plot the epicycloid using GeoNodes. As always, the blend files created here are available on GitHub. You will find the link in the video description. I have already put up the equations here in the image editor for our reference. So let's create a new node tree. From the last part, we know that we start with a line and use the XY components of the position to plot the curve. So let's add a mesh line. The count of points on mesh line will be our resolution. So I'll connect the count to the group input. Let's remove the geometry input. We don't need that. And I'll rename this count as resolution. Now ultimately we are going to combine the x, y, z values and set the position of this mesh line. So I'll add those nodes as well. Now in the earlier part, we calculated y based on x, but now in this case we need a separate variable called t and the value of that variable should go from 0 to some max value. And a very suitable node for this is the accumulate field node. What this node does is that it accumulates the value we specify here and that value is accumulated as many number of times as there are points on the geometry. So basically, in our case, the geometry contains these many points, that is, the points specified in the resolution. And if we know the max t value, we can calculate the value that we need to feed in here based on the count. I'll quickly illustrate it here. So let's say we have this axis where t goes from, let's say, 0 to 5. And we want to divide this in, let's say, n intervals, we don't know how much, that n will come from this resolution and each and the length of each of this interval will be the value v. And if we use the trailing output socket, the value starts from 0 instead of 1. So we need to take care of that as well. So the way we will get v is that we subtract 1 from this count, that is count minus 1 and the maximum t is divided by this entire thing. So let's create appropriate nodes for that. First we'll add a divide node. The numerator of this divide will come from the maximum value of t. So I'll call this max t. And the denominator will be resolution minus 1. So I'll subtract one from the resolution and give this value to the denominator of divide. Now we'll be getting t here at this point based on our max t value and the resolution. Now let's get to the main part. We want to create nodes for these equations. I'll start with a divided by b. So I'll add a divide node and straight away create a group so that we can use it later for y as well. These values are basically a and b. And after dividing a and b, we want to add 1 to that. So I'll duplicate the node. Add 1. And take cosine of this. Before that, we want to multiply it by t. So I'll add a multiply node here and get the t from here. 
this is our A, this is our B, and this is our D. So divide A and B, then add a 1, multiply by T, then take the cosine, and again multiply by B. This is the second part. Now let's create the first part also. So I'll duplicate the add node and add A and B. Then take the cosine of T and multiply these two values. Now we need to subtract part 2 from part 1. I'll add a subtract node. And this will be our final x. Let's call this x. We have this part ready. Now I'll come out of the group. And let's call this x. I'll just copy this group and create a separate instance and call this y. If you observe, the only difference between x and y is the cos is replaced with sine. So let's replace cos with sine here. This one as well as this one. Now we have the equations ready. We just need to give the values of A, B and T to these groups. Let's get the values A and B from the group input. And we already have the value of T here in the trailing socket of the accumulate field. I feed the x value to the x of combine x, y, z and y to the y of combine x, y, z. Let's connect the geometry also. And let's set the resolution to some high value like 500. Let's increase the max t value to 10. And the values for a and b are 8 and 5. So we have already got the curve. All we need to do is increase this t. And you see we have plotted epicycloid using the geo nodes. Next, let's see the polar form. In polar form, R, which is the distance of the point from origin, is expressed as a function of its angle theta. Here are a couple of examples. If you plot the curve of the function R square equal to A square times theta, you get a particular type of spiral called Fermat spiral. And the equation R equal to A plus B times theta gives us another type of spiral called Archimedes spiral. Let's plot the Archimedes spiral using geo nodes. We have the node set up from our earlier example. I have just opened the image with the new equation in the image editor for our reference. Since we ultimately need x and y values, I have converted the equations for x and y values based on the relation x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta. In this case, the part played by theta is pretty much the same as that of t in our previous example. We need to vary a value from a particular starting point to an end point. And in our earlier example, we had defined max t as the maximum value and taken 0 as the minimum value. We can continue doing the same thing. The only thing is since theta denotes angle, we want to define the number of rounds the angle makes. For example, one particular round will mean 360 degrees, that is uh, 2 pi radians. So basically, if we multiply this max t value with 2 pi, we should get the number of rounds that that particular curve will make. So after this, I'll just add another multiply node and multiply this value with 2 pi. And instead of max t, I'll call this number of rounds. One round means going from 0 to 2 pi value in that curve. Now all we need to do is just change is x and y values. I'll tab into this group, x, delete these values. We already have a, b and t. Let's rename t as theta. I first get cos of theta, then multiply this 
with a plus b theta. So let's first multiply b with theta. And let's add a to that. And finally, let's connect this output socket to multiply. So this is our expression a plus b theta multiplied by cos theta. Let's get that in the output. I'll come out of the group and duplicate this group node. Make a separate instance. Call this y. And let's only change the cos to sine. So we now also have the y parameter calculated. Let's make the connections for y also. a to a and theta to theta. Let's change the output to y. And you see we have a spiral, the Archimedes spiral that we saw in the example. I just reduce the a and b values and reduce the number of rounds, let's say 5. If I set this to 1, you see there is just one round being made from 0 to 2 pi. And if I increase that, the number of rounds will get increased. So that's it about plotting math equations using geometry nodes. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write in the comment section below. Thank you very much.